I'm Meredith, and welcome to our Creativity Club. I'm the brand ambassador for Faber-Castell USA Creativity for Kids. Just a few notes before we get started. This class will be recorded, so if you miss something, don't worry about it. You can always go back and catch it later. Another thing, I can't hear or see you, but there are plenty of ways to interact with me during our class today. So in the chat box, if you have any questions, go ahead and you can message or ask me any question you have through the chat box. At the bottom of your screen, there's a little smiley face that you can click on and react to our video um, using emojis. And during the webinar, I'm going to ask you for your input. So a vote here box will appear and you can go ahead and choose whatever it is that um, you would like to vote on and I'll be able to see that. Uh, finally, there's links to, for you to follow us on social media. So we'd love to see what you create. Um, you can just ask it a parent or an older friend and you, they can um, post your creation online and just tag Creativity for Kids. All right, so today we are doing our hide and seek Data Rock Kit. This is so fun. I'm so glad you're here with me. So let's get started. All right, we have our instructions, some brushes, our paint, and our rocks. Okay, so I'm going to leave the box right over here so everybody can see some of the rocks that we've already done for our front of our box, as well as some samples up here, just for some motivation. Now, you will need a couple of things that aren't included in this kit, and that would be some water to rinse your brush, a paper towel to dry your brush, and then paper towels or something to cover your work surface so you don't get your table all dirty. There you go. All right, so let's open up our rocks and I'll show you, you get one, two, wow, these are big rocks, three, four, five, and then you get five in this bag as well. And in here, like I mentioned, we have our instructions. Here's our data rack instructions. And we have our broad tip brush. And this is perfect for covering large areas with paint. And here we have three little brushes that you probably haven't seen before. So we have a lot of rack kits, painting rack kits out there, but these little brushes are specific to this kit. This is what you'll use to create the little dots on our data rock um, racks. We have our handy dandy sponge, which is really helpful for putting our transfers on. And speaking of transfers, here they are now. We have black transfers, and you can see they all have designs made out of dots. And then we have our special transfers that are foil. Cool. So we'll get to those as well. And then we have our social media stickers. So we have a Facebook group in which you can put a sticker on the back of your rack once you're done. And then when you hide it, someone could find it and they would just follow the link here, hashtag creativity for kids. And then they could see all the rocks that have been found. So we'll leave that to the side as well. Okay. Our transfers over here, our sponge, our little brushes, and our big brush. So let's get started. As I mentioned, we want to cover our work surface. We want to have our water on hand and a paper towel. And these are natural rocks, so you might feel that they have a little bit of dust on them because, you know, they're from nature. Um, you can go ahead and just rinse them off and dry them off and they'll be all set to use. So, 
What we want to do is prepare our rack for painting. And what we suggest is painting a layer of white paint down on your rack first. And that will make all of the other colors that you paint pop a little bit brighter. So I've already painted one white, so this one's all ready to go. But I'm going to go ahead and paint a couple other ones um, with a base layer of white as well. So this paint, um, sometimes paint settles, so you want to just mix it around a little bit to make sure that it's all ready to be used to paint your rocks. Now as you're painting your white layer on, and you don't have to, but we do just recommend it to make your colors brighter, um, you can kind of start seeing what the different shapes of rocks what little transfers or what designs you want to create on your rocks might fit best. So for this one, for example, a design that might be a little bit taller or a little bit longer, such as our flower, might fit on that rock. So as you're painting this first white layer on your rocks, just start looking at your designs and see if some shape of rock might fit best for one of the transfers or one of the designs that you want to use. There we go. And this paint is waterproof, so you can leave these rocks out in nature and if they get rained on, the paint will stay on the rock. So I don't know if that's the case for all paints out there, but in our rock painting kits, that is the case because we don't want your creations to go away if you hide your rocks out outside. There you go. Okay, so we've got three of them painted. Let's go ahead and get your advice as to which, which one of our designs would you like to see me use? So looking at our, our racks that I just painted, I have one that's kind of more square and it's a large surface. I have one that's a little bit longer and then this one's very oval. So with those in mind, let's take a look at our transfers. What should we do first? Should we do a butterfly? Should we do a star? Or maybe we wanna do one of these, I'm gonna call it a mandala or flower type design. So, you should see a little box that pops up and you can vote for butterfly, flower, or star. And I'll give you guys a couple seconds to vote on that. And when you're not using your paint, just go ahead and close up the top so you don't spill it just on accident. And these are drying. This paint dries pretty darn quickly. So this one is actually already dry. All right, this one's probably not dry yet. And, aha, okay. It looks like we're gonna be doing our butterfly. And I think the butterfly will work just perfect on this kind of square shaped rock. So to prepare this rock, I'd love to give it a color as the background instead of just the white. So how about if we do, hmm, I think I want to use some pink and purple and maybe some yellow in the butterfly. So I'm going to make the background blue. Again, let's go ahead and mix up our paint. And we can just paint our rock all blue. 
nice and bright because of that white layer that we put down first. Just like this. And we want to get the side of it as well, just like that. Okay. So we do need a couple seconds for this paint to dry. So while we wait, I'm going to go ahead and paint this little rock with a technique that I am so excited to show you. It's when you add paint to your rock and while it's still wet, I'm going to add a second color to the rock. So it's going to get this ombre type effect. And so I'm going to do it in like a circle-y type of a, a way. So I'm going to use yellow. We'll put heat this guy up here to dry. So we go ahead and just grab some yellow and add that to the center. And you don't have to be very exact. You can just kind of paint something of an oval on there. Or if your rock is more circular, you can paint something like a, a circle in the center. Now, I'm going to take the pink. And since the yellow is still wet, the pink and the yellow are going to merge together. So I want the outside of the rock to be pretty much all pink, so I'm going to start out there and paint the rock pink on the outside and not touch the yellow yet, but I'm getting closer. Here we go. Okay. We'll get some nice pink on our brush and then just work right into the yellow. So you can see wherever I'm touching the brush to the yellow, I'm kind of blending it into the pink. So now we have this really cool orange color that's appearing because I'm mixing the wet yellow paint with the wet pink paint. Just like that. And if you want to create like a starburst effect, just keep moving your brush from the center of the rock and outside. So I'm going to hold that up so you can all see that. Cool! Kind of like tie-dye. Maybe it's like a, a sunburst. Okay, so that was super fun. There's another technique that we might get to as well, but we'll let this one sit up here and dry. Okay, our blue paint should be all dry by now. So let's just touch it and see. If it's a little bit tacky, you'll know that it's not dry yet, but this is nice and smooth and all dry. Okay, so what we have to do is we're gonna get our butterfly transfer already. So just take a pair of scissors and cut out your butterfly. And if you're not doing a butterfly, if you didn't want to do the butterfly right now, that's okay. You can do whatever transfer you want. They all work just the same. So we have our butterfly here. Now what we need to do is remove the protective sheet like that. Now we're going to place our transfer face down onto our rack, just like this. And it's a little bit sticky, so it should stay in place. Now we want to use our um, sponge and just get maybe the edge of the sponge wet and push down onto your transfer. And when you push the water down onto the transfer, 
you'll see the design starting to show through. Just like that. I'll hold this up so you can kind of see. Yeah, our butterfly, all the dots that make up the butterfly, you can see through the paper now. Now the whole trick of this working as it should is making sure that the transfer is, uh, the design on the transfer is actually transferring over to the rock. So we need to look, just lifting up the corner of our design, we should be able to see, yep, you can see it, it's starting to transfer. So just slowly removing the white paper and peeling it away, ta-da, perfect. So now we have our butterfly on our rock. Now I'm gonna just dry off some of the excess water, just barely touching the design and drying it just so we can paint over it. So for example, in this rock, what we did was we used our little baby brushes and added dots, because this is dot a rock, to our design. So as I had mentioned, I think I'm gonna use some yellow, some pink, and some purple on our butterfly. So we're going to use our little itty bitty brush. And you know what? I'm going to take our other brush out of our water. Okay, so mix it around a little bit. And you can see I've got a nice amount of paint on here. Just like that. And then you can just dot the paint on your design. So it'll look like this. Now you can see this design, our butterfly is made of larger, rat, or larger dots and smaller dots. So to get that smaller dot, you're gonna get less paint on the tip of your little dotting brush and you can put itty bitty little dots right on your design. So for when you use these little brushes, it just depends on how much paint you have on the tip of your brush as to how big your dot will be. So if you want teeny tiny little dots, you don't press as hard and you have a lot less paint on the tip of your brush and it'll work out really well. Just like that. And I'll hold it up, oh, I missed one. Just like that. So you can see, maybe you can see, all the little yellow dots. All right, so we have yellow. And just like our regular brush, you just wash out these brushes in water and you kind of wipe the paint off. All right. And our pink dots. Now I'm gonna start with the larger dots so I have a larger amount of paint on my brush. And I'm gonna push a little bit harder so the dot is bigger, just like that. And if you don't want to use any transfers and you just want to dot your own designs on your rocks, you can definitely do that. And we would love to see that. So after you do your dotted designs on your rocks, just have an older friend or an adult take a picture so they can post it up on our social media account. All right, so I'm, I've moved on to the medium sized dots. And just like I mentioned, you're just going to put a little bit more pressure than the small dots 
but not as much pressure as the big dots. Okay, and now I have some dots left that I'm going to make purple. And we'll mix it around a little bit, just like that. And then we'll get our purple in here. Boop, boop, boop. You can do a couple dots um, before you have to dip your paintbrush into the paint again, like that. So once these dots are dry, you can always add another smaller dot on top of it using a different color. And that looks really cool too. So here's our butterfly as of now. And I think I would like to fill in a little bit around our butterfly with some of these colors. So just adding a couple little dots around our butterfly on our rack because this is a big rock and I think adding more color to it is fun. Just like that. Okay, cool. So, ta-da! We have our butterfly. Thank you guys for voting on which design you'd like to see. So let's go ahead and do one of our metallic transfers. So we have our butterfly, which we just did a butterfly. So I'd love to hear you, um, your opinion as to whether we do the rainbow, the flower, or the heart. So go ahead, a little box will pop up on your screen and go ahead and vote if you wanna do the rainbow if you want to do the flower or if you want to do the heart next. So I'll let you guys vote. And let's see. We have this one. Oh, this one looks cool too. I'm going to prepare this rock. Actually, both rocks. While you guys are voting, I'm just going to put a layer of white on here to prepare both of these racks just in case we need them. And for future rack painting, they'll be all ready. Just like that. And this one here too. Perfect. Okay. And it looks like you have voted for the rainbow. Okay, cool. The rainbow is a great choice. We can add some fun color in there. Wonderful. Okay. So we'll put these rocks up here. Actually, I think this rock would be perfect for a rainbow. It will go just like that, but we need to let it dry a little bit. So I'm going to show you one more painting technique while we let this rack dry. And this rack is already dry, so I'm going to show you on this one. So the painting technique I'm going to show you is what I did on here. And again, it's pretty much just mixing different colors of paint on your rack directly while the paint is still wet. So in this rack, I used pink, I used purple, and I used blue. So since I've already used that color scheme, how about if we use yellow and green and blue? So we want to start with our lightest color first. So I'm going to get our yellow. And this is really, there's no wrong way to do it. It's just really fun and easy. Um, you start on one side of your rock. So I'm gonna start 
on the left side here and just put down some yellow paint. Just kind of like all over the place like that. Now this paint is still wet. So while the paint is still wet, I'm going to go with my second lightest color, which is this green. And I haven't used the green yet, so I'm going to mix it up a little bit. And then I'm just going to go in and add some green like that. And now the green is still wet. So I'm gonna go in and add some blue. A little bit down here, a little bit in here, and then in here. And you kind of just mix it all together however you really want. And it just creates kind of a marbly, colorful, mixy looking rock. And you can always go back in and add more of whatever color you want. So this one is kind of cool. It reminds me of summer because of the yellow, like a sunshine and the green grass and the blue sky. So this is a very summery colored rock and you could pick out whatever transfer you would want to add to a rock like that. Maybe the little um, dragonfly might be fun. Okay, so that's another fun little technique. And I highly encourage you to try out your own techniques. Just play around with the paint on your rocks and I'm sure you'll come up with something completely unique for yourself. Okay, so Let's give our rainbow a colored background. So how about if this one we make, hmm, I don't know, what color should we make our background for our rainbow? How about if we make it purple? Okay, purple. So we're just gonna put a layer of purple down here. And I think that will work really well because purple and yellow are complementary colors. And we have our transfer that has tones of yellow in it. So we'll go ahead and again, we'll let this dry. We want it to be more dry for using our transfers. So while we let that one dry, we're gonna go ahead and paint one more rock and I think we're gonna paint that one orange because I don't have a full-on orange rock here at all. And it'll be ready to put a transfer on for future rock painting. Ooh, uh, you know what would be so cool? If we made this one a autumn-inspired rock and we could dot a pumpkin or dot a leaf on it. That would be cool. But not today. Today we're just going to go like that. Okay. Okay. Back to our purple rock. Just like we did with the other transfer, we're going to cut out. Let's take our paintbrush out. We're gonna cut out our design just like this. And remove our plastic covering, our protective covering like that. And then we're gonna put it face down on our rock. Just like that. Now, just like before, get the edge of your sponge wet. 
and you're going to just wet the transfer paper so you can start to see the design through it, which we can. And sometimes the metallic or the foil transfers are a little bit more finicky than the black transfers. So we just have to be sure that the transfer is actually transferring onto the rock. So we'll do that again just by lifting up the corner. Oh, I don't think it's there yet. Oh, it's starting to. Let's try this side. Hmm. Oh, this one I did a little bit, I think I did this one a little bit too early. So we're just going to let that one sit. And we're going to try again on this one. Good thing I did that. I prepped this little rock. Okay, so we'll do the rainbow another time, but this time we'll do our flower. And again, we're just going to release the paper. Whoop, like that, Whoop. like that, and put it face down on our rock. Let's see if this one is dry enough. I think one of the issues was my purple wasn't dry enough yet. And I'm going to actually use one that I know is 100% dry, this one. And we'll put our transfer on here. We'll wet the back of it. And these transfers work best on a more so flat rock. But some rocks just have curves, so you kind of have to push the transfer around the curves so they start it starts to mold to the shape of the rock. There we go. All right, let's take a little peek and see if it's transferring. Oh, it is starting to transfer. All right. Pretty. Oh, it's so cool. And I think I really like it on the white. So it really picks up the light. All right, so just like we did for our butterfly, we can pat it dry a little bit. Like that. And then you can choose whatever colors you want and you can dot either on the transfer or you can dot around the transfer and make it look all your own. All right, so when you're done um, painting your rocks, like we had mentioned before, like I had mentioned, we have these cool little stickers that you can take off here and you just put it on the back of your rock. So wherever you may hide your rock, someone can pick it up and see our hashtag creativity for kids. So you can share that on your social media account and share it on our social media account. Well, wonderful. Um, that is the basic of our Dada Rock kit. And I'm so happy that you were able to join me today. And I thought that was super fun. And I can't wait to see what you guys have created. So look for an email coming soon on how you can watch this video again. And if you want to show us what you made, go ahead and ask an adult or an older friend to post it up on our social media. Um, just tag Creativity for Kids. I hope you can join me next time when we unbox our upgraded Pom Pom Pictures kit. So this will be the first kit of three sensory kits that we will be opening in October, which happens to be Sensory Awareness Month. All right, guys, thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye.